in this series of uh, videos we will learn about the domer growth model primarily we will develop the framework of domer growth model and then we will try to develop its solution a time path and finally in the third of this uh, series we will learn about its numerical solution and its diagrammatical depiction domer growth model is basically a contribution to the work of keynes where domer contributed to the existing body of literature by introducing the supply side effect of investment where the uh, keynesian uh, contribution was related to the demand side only here the supply side is explicitly included in the model and hence we get us this process should give us a time path of investment that has the ability to keep the demand and supply side in balance that is in equilibrium and that can happen in a dynamic sense because we are considering a time path where time is an independent variable on which the other variables depend and in this case investment will be defined by it so let us talk about its framework and definitely for every framework we had to set some uh, premises on which the whole model should be founded so we are talking about investment which is actually a stimulus and if there is a change in the rate of investment it should affect the aggregate demand as well as the productive capacity of the economy so this is the demand side that gets affected due to any stimulus of investment that is an increase in investment or the undesirable situation is there can be a decrease in investment however we are talking about the favorable change which is the increase in investment this is the other side that is the product production side or the supply side which is represented with the productive capacity of the economy and symbolically speaking it is represented by kappa which is a greek equivalent of english alphabet k so these are the various symbols that are used in this depiction of the dual effect of investment on any economy now the purpose of domer model is to develop an, a time path of investment because you can see investment as a function of time which is needed when we want the economy to be in equilibrium in other words we want the economy to grow maintaining the full utilization of its productive capacity the equilibrium definitely can be achieved if we are at a position where we are fully able to utilize our resources or the productive capacity so what level of investment should be undertaken over time in order to retain this desirable situation of equilibrium how we can do this definitely we have to observe the effect of the change in investment on both sides that is demand side as well as the supply side which gives rise to a dual change so the change which is on the demand side or income is represented with delta y and the change which is on the supply side or the productive capacity of the economy is represented by delta kappa now the keynes multiplier defines or explains the demand side effect of the change in investment because we remember any change in investment can bring about a multiple change in the national income so if we take their ratio we get a certain scalar or some numerical value which can be for example 5 it means that a unit change in investment can bring about 5 unit change in the national income which is dependent upon the value of mpc in that economy or in other words it can be 1 over 1 minus mpc or small c or 1 over s which is mps this is the basic formula of multiplier in terms of mps and mpc which we remember from our previous knowledge so these are the two formulas for Keynesian investment multiplier where investment has a multiplying effect on the national income now we drop this k that is just a notation of multiplier and we carry these two sides that are more 
uh, meaningful in terms of the variables or parameters that can help us to understand the whole situation. So we rearrange for dy here we have extracted the value of dy which is in other words the change in income whereas the right hand side that is 1 over s remains there which is a kind of multiplier that gets multiplied with with this di which gets shifted to the other side that is gets multiplied and this di basically is the change in investment so in order to find the change in income i can simply multiply the change in investment with the multiplier and i will get the response so numerically if the change in income is 500 there should have been an investment of 100 units which when multiplied with the multiplier gave us the value of 500. So this is a numerical instance of how the multiplier uh, functions and gives rise to a certain change in income. And this is the change in investment which is the stimulus in the Domer's growth model. Now uh, we can further look into this that is the process of dynamization of these expressions because we are talking about a dynamic analysis so we can do the dynamic uh, analysis simply by introducing the time variable on both sides so uh, before doing that let us develop the supply side as well here the supply side is defined by the productive capacity and what we can do is we can observe the productive capacity per unit of capital. It means that how much each unit of capital is capable of producing the output. Which means productive capacity kappa over capital K is a kind of ratio that tells us about the productivity or the ability of each unit of capital. Now this is rho which is simply a scalar or a symbol that we have used to take the value um, as, as the uh, outcome of this ratio that is kappa over k this is also a greek letter written like this r h o and it is similar to p which can be considered as an equivalent of sim uh, alphabet p from a uh, greek language so these are the usual notations of kappa and k and numerical example can be this that if the productive capacity is 5 and capital is 1 that is if the answer of this ratio is 1 it means that each unit of capital has the ability to produce 5 units of output this is what we have just explained now this value of rho is assumed to be constant it's not necessary that it always remains constant but just to set the foundation of this model and to be able to understand the model easily we are assuming that this uh, value of rho is constant and the real life reasoning for this is that technology is also assumed to be constant because if the technology is the same it doesn't improve then the capital will have the same ability to produce and if the technology improves the same capital can be able to produce more so keeping this simplifying assumption we will go ahead rewriting productive cap cap capacity capital ratio uh, we can rewrite it the same ratio that we developed and we can extract the value of productive capacity that is kappa it will be equal to this by using the cross multiplication now as we uh, set this uh, process of dynamization of these equations because we are talking about the dynamic version of the analysis so on both sides that is the demand side as well as the supply side we will dynamize the situation and for that we can take the derivative with respect to t because that means that there is a rate of change of the variables over time which makes it a dynamic analysis so taking a derivative of this equation we will get this uh, version of the same equation 
uh, rho is already assumed to be constant this is why it has come out of the derivative and capital is uh, definitely the variable the derivative of which with respect to time is mentioned here productive capacity is also considered to be variable therefore its derivative is mentioned here now again we can see this that since rate of change of capital is assumed to be equal to investment because this is a certain formula that we have studied before in which we see that the rate of change of capital is equal to investment so instead of writing dk over dt i have written investment here that is i so this is the uh, final version of the supply side in dynamic sense of the word now we come back to the uh, demand side and we try to dynamize it in the last equation we developed dy and di so uh, we are going to convert them into dynamic versions and for that we take their quotients with dt that is we can differentiate them or we can divide them with dt on both sides when we do so this equation that we developed in the last um, step that is this step this version we can convert this into a dynamic version by dividing it on both sides by dt or taking the derivative with respect to t so we did it by doing the same and we got the dynamic version of the demand side we know about what small s stands for that is the marginal propensity to save and it is definitely considered to be a constant so it comes out of the process of the derivative so we have the dynamic versions of both supply side and the demand side and these are the effects of investment on these two sides the static sense of equilibrium requires that the demand side and the supply side they are equal that is the current income or production is equal to the production potential which means that we are at full utilization but in dynamic sense we have to introduce time and this thing should be maintained over time it should not be lost because as soon as this balance is lost the equilibrium will also be lost so for this we uh, can say that the rate of change of demand side is equal to the rate of change of investment but this can be uh, meaningful if we are starting the journey of our analysis from equilibrium so if we are at equilibrium at the initial point in time the equilibrium can be maintained if the rates of change of both over time are the same it is simply when the two vehicles are moving parallel on a highway they are in a kind of equilibrium and if we want them to remain in equilibrium their speeds should be the same because if their speed becomes different then definitely one of them will be left behind and the other vehicle will lead the other and they will be no more in that state of equilibrium so the rates of change over time no matter it is the speed of this certain example that we took or the rate of change of these two sides that is the demand and supply side they should remain the same so the rate of change of income and the rate of change of productive capacity they should remain the same now this is the condition for the equilibrium in the domer growth model which is a dynamic uh, equilibrium and it is not an, an equilibrium which is just static so we have developed a dynamic equilibrium condition of the domer growth model by using some assumptions which were simplifying assumptions as well as they were realistic and uh, this was the process where the demand and supply side effects of 
a stimulus of investment they were considered so we have developed the framework in this video and in the next one we will try to find out the solution of the time path for that stimulus of investment thank you